Hey, hi everyone. Welcome to our free Python certification program. My name is Nasir. I'm working as a CTO at ProIT Bridge. Here at ProIT Bridge, we build some cutting AI tools. Now, whenever I talk about AI, what language is used to make this AI models? We have this question in our mind, right? Which language do we use to code the AI models? Can you guys give me the answer? Which is the most used language in data science or data analyst? Yes, you guys can give the answer in the comment session. All right, so let's make this an interactive session where you guys, whenever I ask any questions, you guys can answer those things in the comments so that I can understand that, okay, what is your understanding where we can uh, put more focus on and where we can improve, okay? So let's make this an interactive session. Okay, now getting back to this, uh, which language do we use for making AI models? Yes, come on quickly, type the answer. Absolutely, we are going to make use of Python. So that's why we have decided that we are going to give you guys a free Python certification program where you understand the basics of Python in very simple and easy terminologies. Now, before we get started, let's quickly have a look on a small important information. See, whenever we are going to do any program, try to listen carefully so that we can effectively utilize our time. And it's not just about the certification, it's about the knowledge which you gain, right? So please put more focus on getting knowledge and effectively utilizing your time. All right, then next thing, whenever we start anything new, try to go from the very basic. Well, whenever we are learning the language, first we'll learn A, B, C, D, right? We'll try to learn the alphabets. Then we will try to learn words. So similarly, if you are trying to learn anything new, we have to go from very basic so that our basics are strong. Whenever we have a strong foundation, it will be very helpful for our future. All right. And see, coding or scripting is something, it's similar to cooking. Can we learn cooking just by watching the videos? Yes. Is it possible to learn cooking just by watching the videos? No, right? So that's why please do practice regularly and do the assignments, whichever we are giving after the completion of the classes and to get the certification, remember. So this one important point I want to stress out here. See, to get the certification, you need to go through an assessment. After completing the entire program, you need to go through the assessment, all right? Now, if you guys have not watched the first video, please do watch that and do the registration because without registration, we won't be able to hand you the certificate. All right, so if you are watching this video for the first time and before this you have not watched any Python video, go back and watch your pre our previous video and register and then come back to this, then we can get started. All right, so in next slide, we are going to go with the name of this particular program, Programming for Everybody. Right. So we have designed this program in such a way that even a beginner who does not have any coding or any prior scripting knowledge will be able to start with programming. All right, so based on this, we have decided uh, designed this particular program. So the name of this program is Programming for Everybody. So if you have completed, still you can watch this and learn from this. But if you are a very beginner who have never done any coding, no need to worry, we are going through very basics. Like we will be taking baby steps initially and then we will start with running, okay? But we need to understand how to walk. Then only we'll be able to run, right? So let's get started, right? So the first question is programming. Now, there's a question in my mind. Answer, what is programming, right? So can you guys answer what is programming in a very simple and layman terms? What is programming? Yes, come on. Programming is nothing but writing a program. That is programming. Okay, now say then what is program? See, program are set of instructions for computer to perform. Okay, so what we are doing is we are giving certain set of instructions for a computer. We are giving some instructions and this come instructions has to be performed by computer. That is nothing but our program. Now, why do we need program? See, Humans by nature are very lazy, right? So if you see this person, like 
as a human, we are very lazy and we do not like to do same task again and again. Right. So this is where computers are very helpful. Right. Where if I ask computer to do same task thousand times, hundred thousand times, like one million times, it won't say no. It keeps on executing the same set of instructions. Right. So because humans are lazy, because of this, computers are very important. Now, whenever I have a computer, I need to give it a set of instructions to perform. So how are we going to give that set of instructions? With the help of program. So that is nothing but writing a program or writing a set of instructions for a computer is nothing but programming. That simple. Okay. Now, where do we write program? Obviously, because if you want to communicate with computer, then where are we going to communicate? With computer. So we are going to write the program in computer. All right. Now, what are the prerequisites, Nasser? Uh, because I've never learned any programming or I've never done any uh, like programming related stuff. So is it necessary for me to be from a programming background? No. The only necessity is you should be human. This course is designed in such a way that we are going to start from the very basic. No previous knowledge of any kind of scripting is required. All right. So now the next question is, so we need to write program. So what is program? A set of instructions. Then the question is, how are we going to give the set of instructions to a computer? Yes. So we need to give somehow, right? So initially, we'll be talking about how the programming evolved. Okay, step by step, we'll be learning everything. We will not just directly jump into Python because without understanding our history, we won't be able to move to our future. Okay, so the, the task here is, as a human, I need to give certain set of instructions to a computer. So basically, humans need to communicate with computers. Okay, now how do two humans communicate with each other? With the help of language. All right, now I want to communicate with machine. So can I use our human language? No, why? Because what are computers? Yes, what are computers? Computers are machines, right? Okay, then if computer is a machine, which language do they understand? Yes, come on, quickly drop the answer in the comment. Computers, they speak which language? Or machines, they speak which language? Come on, I'm going to give you two seconds. Machines are going to speak or communicate in which language? Absolutely, they are going to communicate in machine language. Now, what is machine language? See, like our English language, we have alphabets. How many alphabets we have? 26, right? A to Z. Similarly, in machine, we have two alphabets. What are those two alphabets? Yes, what are the two alphabets present in machine language? Zero and one. Zero means low voltage and one stands for high voltage. All right, so now we know how we are going to talk to a machine. So basically we need to talk in machine language so that machines can understand and do certain set of instructions for us. Okay, so then what we did is we started to write codes or we started to write programming in machine language. Like zero, 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 one, because machine only understand this, right? So this is given to the art of our computer. What is the art of our computer? Microprocessor. Now, whenever I'm giving this to microprocessor, will the microprocessor understand whatever the set of instructions I have given? Yes, will the microprocessor understand what are the set of instructions I have given? Yes or no? Yes, why it is understanding? Because we are talking to it in its, its language, right? You're talking to the microprocessor in the language which microprocessor understands. So it will give us the answer, okay? So let's say this. Yes, it is going to give us the answer. But again, if you see there are certain disadvantages with this particular programming method. Okay, now sir, what are the disadvantages? See, first thing is it is very difficult for us to understand. Now, looking into this particular program, are we able to understand what instruction are we giving to the computer? No, right? So the only computer scientist who understand this language will be able to understand this code. A common people, 
for common people like us. It will become very difficult. Right. So the first major disadvantage was very difficult to understand. And it is difficult for us to debug. Imagine if by accident I misplace some zeros. Okay. So by accident I misplace some zeros and ones. Now, can we easily able to correct this? It will be so difficult for us to identify, right, where we have made a mistake. Right. So debugging is something where we are trying to identify the error and remove the error. Okay. So it will become very difficult for us to remove this error. Right. Then what to do? Then scientists decided, okay, so if we go with machine language, it will be very difficult for humans to write the programs to give the instructions to computers. Then they decided, okay, what can we do? Let's come up with some new language. They came up with assembly label language, right? So the second structure or the second language which was introduced was assembly language. Now, Nasir, what are we doing in assembly language? Right, so see, we started to use mnemonics. We started to use short forms. We started to use registers. Okay, now here, if you see, here, this is a set of instructions in assembly language, add ax comma bx. Now, what do we understand by the set of instruction? We are not getting a clear picture, but still we are able to understand that something addition is going on between ax and bx. We are performing certain addition. So compared to our machine language, our assembly level language was a bit easy to understand. We cannot say it is completely easy. We'll understand that. But compared to our machine language, this is better. Don't you agree with me? Because here we are able to understand, right, what we are performing. Okay. Now the question is, when I take this assembly level language and I give this language as an input to our microprocessor, will the microprocessor give us the output? Yes, come on, quickly comment the answer in the comment box. When I give the assembly level language to the microprocessor, will the microprocessor give us the output? Yes or no? Yes, Nasser, microprocessor will give us the output. No, Nasser, microprocessor will not give the output. Come on, quickly. I'll be looking into the comment sessions, okay? So please quickly type it. Okay, yes, so for the people who have said no, you are absolutely correct. The mi microprocessor won't be able to give any output. Why? Why it is not able to give the output? See, what is microprocessor? Microprocessor is a machine. And what is a machine? Which language does it speak? It only speaks machine language. But which language we are giving as the input in? Assembly language. Then answer what to do. Right. So here what we do is we make use of assembler. Okay. So here we can see we make use of assembler. Now the job of the assembler is to take assembly level language. What is the job of the assembler? It takes the assembly level language and it gives out the output as machine level language. Now this machine level language is then given as the input to our microprocessor. Will microprocessor now understand the inputs? Yes, it is happy because we are communicating with microprocessor in the language which microprocessor understand. Okay, but still again, there are certain disadvantages of our assembly level language, right? So it is very difficult for us to understand with respect to the memory aspects. Now, whenever I talk about this AX, BX, these are all registers. People who have studied electronics and communication, I think you'll be able to remember microprocessor, we had AX register, BX register, right? So these are some registers and all those information. So it is again difficult for a normal person to understand. Right. And it is it takes a lot of time to write the code because we need to follow the proper structure. Okay, we need to move into AX first. Okay, move uh, like AX will be having, then move BX. Something will be having a lot of commands. So it is very difficult for us to write the code as well. Compared to machine language, it is easy. But still, it has not reached the mark where it is very easy for the programmers to write it or very easy for the common people to write it. Okay, then again, scientists decided we cannot just work with this. 
we need to come up with new level language so this is where our high level language was introduced okay so let's move on to the next one high level language now in high level language we started to make use of english like alphabets okay so here if you see clearly a is equals to a plus b we started to use english like alphabets and symbols so clearly i'm able to understand that i'm adding a with b and whatever the value i'm getting i'm showing it in a very simple right so this is the language which is currently being used for all the programming high level language okay now same question whenever i'm going to give the input of a high level language to the microprocessor will the microprocessor understand and give us the output yes come on quickly give it in the chat session will the microprocessor understand high level language and give the output no then what are we going to do we are going to make use of no 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 we are not going to make use of assembler we are going to make use of compiler or interpreter here okay remember so whenever we are talking about high level language here we are making use of compiler now what is the job of a compiler same thing as assembler what assembler used to do it used to take input as assembly level and give us the output as machine level correct same thing high level we are going to make use of compiler which is going to take input in high level and give the output in machine level all right so this is how we are able to give the instructions to a computer so now presently whatever the instructions we are going to write are the instructions which are written in high level language now this high level language is then given as the input to the compiler compiler is converting it into the machine language which is then given as the input to our microprocessor and microprocessor is giving us the outputs so this is about our history with respect to classification in programming languages so what are the three major classes we have studied we have studied machine language next one was assembly language and the third one is high level language so initially we started with zeros and ones we started to write the program in zeros and ones then we moved to assembly level language we started to use mnemonics such as move add subtract this kind of things but still it was difficult for us to understand and then we started to use directly alphabets and symbols a plus b okay now tell me among this three which one do you feel is the easiest one for us to understand and write the code yes see as we are moving to the high level language it is becoming easy for humans but internally we need to set up some compiler which is going to convert it into machine level language so that we can give the instructions to a computer all right so which one is easy among this high level language okay now moving forward we are just going to deal with this high level language we are not going to go in deep of machine language and assembly language maybe we can plan that any further sessions or something but for now we will move into high level language okay now before we proceed let's have a quick recap so initially we started to give the instructions in the form of machine language where it was difficult for us so we came up with assembly language in assembly language we used to use mnemonics but we cannot give directly so what we are going to do assembler okay and then again still it was a bit hard to understand for us so we decided to go with high level language we created a high level language right in this high level language we are trying to write the program in the form of english alphabets and symbols very easy simple one okay so moving forward we are going to study about high level programming language i hope so far all the basic points whatever we have covered is clear if there are any doubts feel free to drop it in the comment section okay so now let's move forward all right so before we go to the next topic or before we go into the deep of high level language let's quickly have a comparison where i'm going to show you the same instructions written in machine language assembly language and high level language okay so see 
So these are the set of instructions written in machine language, high level, uh, sorry, assembly level language and high level language. Okay. So among this, uh, see, same thing. To perform just this operation, A is equals to 15, we have to write this kind of things. Move AX and we are giving 15. So this particular 15 in hexadecimal will be moved into this AX. AX is a register, right? And then again, in machine language, it is so difficult for us to even understand. Okay, so moving forward, we are just going to deal with high level language. Okay, now let's proceed further. Right, so high level languages also have their own history. Right, so we'll try to go through all the languages uh, just in a brief way. See, the first high level language which was introduced was in the year 1960, before most of us were even born. Right, so the first programming language was introduced in the year 1960 by the person Conrad Zeus. The name of the programming language was Planckville. All right, and then after that, in 1967, BCPL was released. Then in 1969, B language was released by Ken Thomas. Okay, I think these languages you have never heard before, right? B, C, P, L, B, because they're not widely used. They were just the initial beginning phases. Okay, then in 1972, this is where the revolution for the programming industry was started. The language, which is very famous, I think most of us has most of us have studied this in our engineering days as well, right? C, which was introduced by Dennis Ritchie, okay, in the year 1972, right? And then after uh, some years in 1985, where some person named, uh, what is this names, right? So this person, what they did is, they uh, added few features and they removed few features from C. That's why the name C++. So he added four features and he removed two features. So this and this get canceled and the name is C++. C++. Okay, and then in the year 1989, Python was released by Goodow and Ross. Okay, so we might have that confusion, right? Uh, that Java was released first and then Python. No, Python was actually released first. And in the year 1995, Java was released by Sun, Sun Enterprise, the founder of this Java is James Gosling. All right, so this is a brief history with regards to our programming. Okay. Now, do we need to study each and every programming? No. So do we need to study more uh, like common four? No. Okay, now, so then which is the most easiest programming language among all of this? Yes, which is the most easiest program? Yes, Python. Why Python? Why Python we are going to use? Because see, there are a few points which Python is better than others. Okay, after looking into this, we will also go through the coding example to see why Python is so simple. Right, see, Python is very simple and easy to learn when I talk about all the four uh, common languages. One second, let me delete this. See, we have how many? languages important i mean the most common one c c++ java and python now we are going to learn python this is free python certification program why did we choose python okay see first thing is as a beginner python is very simple and easy to learn the syntax compared to all the languages c c++ java and python if you guys have studied any programming languages before you will realize how simple it is to code in Python. Don't you guys agree with me? Compared to all these three, Python is very simpler. Next thing, it has good frameworks for web development. Okay, and the current trending thing, artificial intelligence. Right, so it's the current uh, favorite thing in the market, right? Everybody is talking about AI. Every business is talking about AI. So Python is extensively used in artificial intelligence. Then we, when we talk about data science, Python is extensively used in data science as well. Right. So if you guys are having confusion between what is a data science, 
and what is artificial intelligence, uh, please do watch our video. The link will be given in the description where you can understand what is the difference between data analyst versus data scientist versus data engineer. And then you will also get a clear understanding how is data science uh, difference or uh, what is data science and AI? How are they related to each other? All these things we have made a video, separate video. The link will be given in the description. You can watch this. All right. Okay. Now coming back to why Python. First point was it is very simple and easy to learn. Then we have a web development. Right. It has good frameworks for web development. Then uh, it's majorly used in artificial intelligence, which is in turn, basically it's based on data science itself. You'll understand those things. And one more very important reason why we have to learn Python is because of high salaries. Why Python has high salary? Because it is extensively used in data science. And these days, again, AI is something which is trending like anything. Every industry is using AI, right? So this is the reason why we should know Python basics. Okay, now, again, before this, let's try to do one thing. Let's try to write the first program which we write in all the programming languages. It's the very first program which we are going to write. We are going to write Hello World program in four different languages. What are, the, what are those four languages? C. C++, Java, and Python, okay? And you guys will be able to see the difference, how simple it is to make use of Python, all right? So uh, first let's write it into C++, C. So to write this, just to print hello world, hello world onto the display, we need to write these many lines of codes. If you remember in our college days, we used to buy hard this, right? Uh, hash include stdio.h, conio.h, Correct. And uh, hash include IO stream, input, output stream. Right. We used to write int main. Right. Same thing. Whenever we have studied Java, we go with public static void main. There are so many brackets opening and closing. When to open and when to close. It's so confusing. Right. But when I talk with respect to Python, can you guess how many lines of code is required to print hello world? Here you can see. Here I think we need somewhere around one, two, three, four, four to five lines, four to five lines, four to five lines. But how many lines do we require to write it in Python? Yes, come on, quickly comment in the chat how many lines we need. Just one line, that's it. Just if I'll say print hello, it is executing. It is this simple to learn Python. All right, now, what or where are we going to write this Python? See, Python has certain set of IDEs, integrated development environments, where we can write Python. Okay, now what is IDE in ourselves? So whenever I say, uh, go and open, and sorry, go and write some text. So what we are going to do? Either we go with Notepad or we go with Word. Right, these are the two most common ones, right? So similar way, these are the IDE for writing the text documents or creating the text documents. Right. But when I talk with respect to Python, it also has certain own set of IDEs. Okay, one second. Yes, Python also has certain own set of IDEs. All right, so in the next video, we'll be learning how to install Python into our system. All right, so hope you have enjoyed the video and please make sure to like and subscribe and make sure you're watching all the videos so that we can get a clear understanding and then go through the assessment Please remember, just don't go for the certification. Also try to utilize this time to understand the basics. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. The support team number is given in the description. Thank you.